let me, let's talk about guns. Uh, it, it seems like an obvious topic to talk about, given the fact that you are the elected official who may be most closely associated with gun legislation and with advocacy on behalf of the Second Amendment. And uh, we are at a moment in this country when we seem to be talking about this quite a lot. You heard the President's State of the Union, I'm sure, on uh, Tuesday night. Uh, discussion of the many things he would like to see pass uh, Congress, assault weapons ban, high capacity uh, uh, magazine uh, ban, uh, universal background checks, all those things. Do you find anything in the proposals that the President is talking about that you as a strong advocate for the Second Amendment can get behind? Uh, I think the uh, increasing the background checks to some extent with exceptions for anybody who has a concealed handgun license, which is already in the law, uh, exceptions for family and friends, and for a way of permanently preserving, or with a way of permanently preserving the uh, uh, identification linkage to a particular si uh, firearm serial number, that's, that's working out. But see, the problem with this, is we, we could look at that, but the problem is that's not what the gun grabber side wants. They want registration. The uh, gun grabber, you mean the people advocating uh, exactly. for some I mean, gun they, control? They'll be, they, they use the terms, uh, you know, uh, reasonable, sensible, and that's not what they're after. They're, this, this is all incrementalism. Uh, so while there's things I could support, yeah. uh, you know, we would have to get something in return, like universal reciprocity of concealed handgun license holders across all 50 states. Mm -hmm. We now know that those doomsday predictions of blood in the streets, wild, wild west, shootouts at every four-way stop when we pass the concealed handgun law did not occur. Yep. That's evidence is clear. Right. So all those jurisdictions like uh, Chicago or Illinois or New York or California that still preclude a shall issue concealed handgun license uh, uh, program, if they would pony up and say, you know, we're, we're going to do that, we might, then I would be willing to talk about some but stuff. But in the absence of some kind of reciprocity in those states, yeah. your position would be no change to the laws that exist right now. Uh, no, no change. What I'm saying is we have a, a background check, a NICS system today. Right. I don't have a problem expanding the NICS system as long as you have exceptions uh, for family, for friends, for concealed handgun license holders, and you can forever protect the anonymity yeah. of the purchaser of that firearm. Right. But that will not occur because that's not acceptable to uh, the Obama administration or our uh, attorney general. Right. Yeah, as, as recently as just a few years ago, uh, Wayne LaPierre of the NRA, video has surfaced yeah. of this, yeah. was himself an advocate for significantly expanded, I don't know if we can go all the way to say universal, but significantly expanded background checks. He has pulled back and the NRA has pulled back from their position. One on the of the market. good things about the discussion now is we're not talking about the gun show loophole because the gun show loophole is merely a pejorative term for the individual transfer so-called loophole. Yeah. And that's, what's fear, that's what gun owners fear, is that if every transfer is a background check transfer, that could lead to a registration, yeah. and you can't have confiscation without registration. Do you, if, from the standpoint of motive, do you believe, as some do, that, and, and there are some you know, strong advocates of the Second Amendment, defenders of the right to bear arms, say that what is really going on here is the government wants to come into our houses and take our guns. Do you believe that that position is, has any credibility? Yeah, I think that position has credibility but not today. Everybody's talking about, nobody's going to, you know, hear this uh, Obama will say, nobody's going to take your guns. Well, they really mean that. They, they're sincere, but we're not talking about today. We're talking about the slippery slope. We're talking about several generations down the road yep. as this incrementalism goes forward. Yep. And you cannot take guns unless those guns are registered. So that is the big fear of those of us in the Second Amendment crowd. Why not discuss a ban on high capacity magazines? Uh, uh, there are people who will say, I'm a hunter, I'm a gun owner, I believe in the right to bear arms, but no one in a normal everyday setting needs a high capacity magazine. A, and they've contributed in some way to some of the things we've yeah, seen. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I would tell you that I don't think the high-capacity magazines have contributed to the carnage in a measurable amount. You know. If you're familiar with changing magazines, yeah. whether you've got a 10-round magazine, 20-round magazine, 30-round magazine, you can, you can commit as much carnage with a 10-round magazine. And again, <laughs> if you look at the data, firearms fatalities, and this is something that has to be said, we don't have a gun problem, we have a nut job problem. So when I passed the concealed handgun law in 1993 till the last year that data is available, which is 2010, the National Institute for Justice firearms fatalities have declined from 7 per 100,000 to 3 per 100,000 in that almost two decade period. Firearms homicides go like this. And you, and you can, you, you believe, or would like to at least, directly attribute that decline to 
the presence of concealed handguns. Well, you know, I'm not going to, that's, it, it's happened at the same time. It's I'm either not, coincidental I, or it's not. Yeah, I don't know if it's coincidental or not, but yeah. what I do know is that the doomsday predictions did not occur. Right. And those folks who were making those doomsday predictions in 1993 and 1995 about the concealed handgun law are the same ones who today are saying that we've got a ban, that we've got to institute an assault weapons ban, which was really instituted in 1934 in the National Firearms Act. I have no right to own a fully automatic weapon. So, so the discussion of an assault weapons ban today, probably the least popular among the general it's public. Not, it's not happening. Uh, but, but it sounds to me like you think it's kind of a moot point because there's already legislation on the books that restricts. No, there is, there is the, the yeah. federal law, the National right. Firearms Act passed in 1934, eliminated right. my right to the extent that it existed to own a fully automatic weapon. As a Marine with 24 year service, I can tell you that an assault weapon must be full auto capable in order to be an assault weapon. Right. What we have now is assault look-alike weapons right. and bans based upon cosmetics as opposed to based upon functionality. The president asked at the end of his speech, Commissioner, for a vote. He didn't ask that the stuff pass. He just said the people of Newtown, the people of Aurora, the people of these other communities that have been ravaged by violence uh, want to vote, up or down. And you know it could some some of these things could pass some yeah. not why, why not at least vote on the legislation? I think that shows the president's position is weakening. I think that he believed he had a very strong position. You think he's retreating? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think it's smart on his part. There may be some things that could be agreed to, with exceptions. Again, I talk about that so-called right. universal background. Well, check. and in fact, there's a yeah. Senate bill. Apparently, Senator Coburn from Oklahoma on the Republican side, Senator yeah. Schumer. On the Democratic side, according to the National Journal, there's a bipartisan bill that by the end of the week, in fact, could get to some place on universal yeah. background and, checks. And again, we have a nut job problem, not a gun problem. We need to start trying to figure out how we can identify the nut jobs. Right. Uh, and, and I would submit to you, people say the Second Amendment has outlived its usefulness. It was uh, appropriate in 1775 or when we had Indians right. on the frontier, and it's not appropriate today. But I would submit to you that the First Amendment kills as many as the Second, or is as dangerous to... Explain. Well, because uh, every time we have one of these uh, uh, miscreant, uh, mentally deranged shooters, it is 24-7, 365 uh, broadcast media coverage, and then, we'll, then you'll see several that follow. So in other words, the right of your industry, not you specifically, but the broadcast industry to continually put that shooter's picture on TV. And somewhere in America, there's a guy, a young 19 year old guy who's got a little bit missing upstairs is watching that and then he thinks, I can be somebody. Do you think the media is responsible for giving oxygen to these guys and creating copycats? I, I think liberty has a price. The liberty of uh, free speech, the First Amendment protection on the media's right to report, the Second Amendment protection on the right of citizens to own firearms, all of that has a price. Yep. The Fifth Amendment guarantee against uh, self-incrimination has a price. Liberty has a price. So if I were the parent of one of the Newtown victims or the husband of one of the Aurora victims and I were sitting across from you, and I said to you, Commissioner, we all want to protect the right to, the, to bear arms. We want to protect the Second Amendment, but what's happened to my family is happening across the country all too often. You feel like there's an argument to make to rebut that emotion, which the president was obviously appealing he to. Was a point, it was a base appeal to emotion. Yeah. It was kind you of begrudge, You begrudge him that. There are some people who yeah. say he's using the Newtown families as a prop. I think that's not too far from accurate. You, you, you do yeah, think he's I, a, I think that's too, and it, you know, you cannot, you know, I've had, I've been, we've had hearings when I was in the Senate and we were passing the concealed handgun law and, you know, uh, a mother of a child who was shot in gang violence is lamenting that fact and testifying against the concealed handgun law and you don't even respond. You just, you just say, I'm sorry for your loss. Let her have her grief. Let her, let her have her grief. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the factual basis, again, firearms homicides have declined. Uh, about 55% right. since 1993. Mm -hmm. We don't have a gun problem, we have a nutcase problem.